Uh, she is a two-time Olympic gold medalist. Uh, Heather Moyes is with us on the line. Well, hello and congratulations. Hello and thank you very much. Uh, is the other one at home back in Summerside? The other one is home. Yeah. You didn't think about taking it over with you? No, I needed to focus on the next one. You can't be distracted by what's already happened. So got to focus on the next one. Is it possible at all, Heather, to compare one to the other in terms of significance, importance, drama, you know, anything? I mean, you can always, you can, I mean, you can always compare anything. I think that they're both equally as significant and important, but for very different reasons. You know, in Vancouver, we were underdogs coming up and mm -hmm. we were just so excited and thrilled and proud of ourselves for having put together four great runs and doing something that, you know, wasn't necessarily expected or assumed that we would be able to accomplish. Um, and so that in itself was just remarkable. And the fact that it was on home soil in front of all of our Canadians, I mean, I think it was really the environment that made that one so significant that right. we were at home. Um, and then going into Russia, I mean, it's to defend. That's not a very common thing that happens. And it's, you know, for a sport that comes down to hundreds of a second, it was, you know, it's not the most likely of occurrences. And and again, it just came down to consistency, and I'm just proud that we were able to kind of keep our heads and not crack under pressure and, and keep things going when when maybe after the first day they didn't seem so as smooth as it had in Vancouver. So anyway, it was great, and it's I think because of that and because of defending and making history, that kind of adds to the to the sweetness of the second one. What are you thinking before that fourth run in Sochi, Heather, when you know you've got to gain some ground? Um, well, Kaylee doesn't look at times. And often I don't either because it's not really relevant to me, but um, she doesn't like looking at, uh, at time differences. And I'm really glad that she doesn't because it's, to me, for years I had been saying, I think it's the only thing that looking at, at a time can do, it, the only thing it can be is a distraction. You know, if you were looking at the time sheet between runs and you say, oh, look, well, we're only two hundredths away from someone else, then, you know, I think I can make up that time in this corner. I would just look at them and be like, well, if you knew you could make up time there, why didn't you do it the first time? Mm. Or if they make a mistake in the next run, then all they're thinking about is shoot, they lost it. Like there goes the there goes the all you're thinking about is time. Whereas if you don't have the time, you can only think about process. You can only think about you know perfecting each corner and doing the exact program you know to get down the track and not worry about how it's affecting anything else. So after the first run on the second, so after our third run. Um, you know, people know that Kaylee doesn't like the time, but they were just so excited because we brought, we basically cut the difference in half. And so they were, you know, they're like, it's in reach, it's in grasp, it's, you know, all of those things. And so Kaylee was just like, we got into the dressing room. She just looks at me, she goes, I kind of want to know what the time is. And mm. I just looked at her and I said, no, you don't. You don't need to look at the time. I said, just trust me and know that it's possible. We closed the gap like we talked about last night. We closed the gap. They will be scared. And it's possible. We just have to do another run the same way we just did it, and that's what we did. And it was, it was pretty. It was a pretty remarkable feeling. With Heather Moyes, so I'm intrigued. Mm -hmm. um, Ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people listening or watching this program right now either have never and will never uh, get into a bobsled, um, and certainly not compete at the level that you have competed at. Is there a point? during a race where you can feel, because this is a sport decided by hundreds of seconds, is there, a, is there a point during a race where you can feel the quality of your run, whether it's good or bad, good enough? Absolutely. There is. Absolutely, yes. Um, I've been with, obviously, some different drivers. Uh, and, you know, people, people will often come up to me and say, oh, well, is it scary? And I will say, you know, some tracks are scarier than others, um, especially when I, it's my job to get this leg going as fast as possible. And yet I have no control over it once I jump in. Mm -hmm. And that's not exactly the most comforting feeling. Um, some tracks are scary. Some drivers are not as experienced. Um, and I've had some, I've had some runs in the past where I, all I was doing was literally praying that the driver would get the sled under control. And it's, you, you hit every, you're hitting every wall on the way down. You can feel like you're flopping off of corners. Sometimes you're coming out on two runners and you're, you're about to crash. And sometimes, you know, some runs 
some people say maybe it would, it would have been better if you'd crashed because then you're not just slamming your body around in the back of the sled. Yeah. Um, you can definitely, like, I mean, obviously when I'm driving with, a, uh, when I'm sliding with a driver like Kaylee, the runs aren't going to be that drastic. But when you go down the track, I also know the corners. I don't know the drives of the corners, but I know where they go. I know how they're supposed to feel. And I'm able to talk to her at the bottom. And as she goes over her run, I'll say, Kaylee, how was it? I, I may already know how it was, but I'll talk to her and she'll, you know, go over it. She'll be like, oh, well, I hit just coming out of corner seven and I shouldn't have hit there. I could have gone straight through. And she goes over things in her head. And a brakeman, an experienced brakeman in the back will be able to also point out things that they missed. Like, um, did we have a tap between two and three? I feel like we had a tap and then we kind of fishtailed. We kind of skidded through the, and she'll think back and she'll be like, yeah, you're right. Okay, I tap there. And then I, so that means that when I come out of corner two, I have to, okay, okay, I got it. You know, it's kind of going over all right. those things. And, and once you've slid long enough in the back, you can, you're able to give that kind of feedback to your driver and, and, you know, work through all those fears in the corners and, and do all that stuff. And you can definitely tell when you're flying. You can definitely tell when it's a smooth run, when you're shooting the chicanes and you're not hitting any walls on a big, long straightaway, flying into a corner. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, pretty sweet feeling so did uh, you did you feel i know someone had to come they had to come after you so you know, you were, it wasn't the end of the it wasn't the end of the end of the event when you guys finished your run but did you feel the gold medal before you looked at the uh, at the clock no because that's the gold medal is really i mean it, we can't control what anybody else does i mean the americans have phenomenal equipment and the races and and they had wonderful pushes as well and they the race comes down to all three things your equipment your pushes your drive like the entire package you need all those three things and so for us we had had decent runs on the first day as well and for some reason we were still back by 23 hundredths and so on the second day after the first run and we brought it back down to a, a 10 uh 11 hundredths i guess was the difference um i knew that i knew that we had nailed the fourth run but you also, I also had no idea what the Americans were going to do. Like they could have nailed the fourth run as well. And if they, if they had the exact same time that we'd had, they would have still beaten us by those 1100. Mm -hmm. Right. So really you can't control what anybody else does. As soon as we had gotten out of the sled, we just gave each other a, like just a hug. And just, we had finished knowing that we finished on an amazing note. We are happy with how we raced. We can't control what anybody else does. And so really it's, we're going to leave the games happy. We're pleased with our performance. We did an amazing job. And now we can't, we'll just have to see what the Americans come up with. And I did have a feeling, a very strong feeling, that if the, if we were able to close the gap a bit during the third run, that I was pretty sure that they would crack under pressure in the fourth run. And, and they did. So it was, I think they just got freaked out realizing we'd close the gap so much in the fourth run. As soon as you make a mistake at the top, it then becomes more of a driving out of fear of making more mistakes instead of just going for it. Going for it, yeah. So here's a couple of stupid questions. <laughs> Do you, um, I, I gathered by something you said earlier, there's no conversation that takes place during a run between you two. No, there's none. Is it, no time. Is it loud? Um, some tracks are louder than others, and some sleds are louder than others. It's pretty, I mean, you hear, I mean, it's a metal sled. Like, the frame is metal. Well, yeah. So you do hear a little bit of it, and the runners on the on the ice and stuff. But you can, when you get to the bottom and you start picking up speed, some tracks you can actually hear a little bit of whistling, like St. Moritz. It's just this little, like, whistling because it's a natural track. There's no metal on the track. Yeah. So it's, it's a... It's not very loud. You just, you can hear things. But it's more like a whooshing sound when you start picking up the speed and it's pretty fun so theoretically we got to get you down the track we, we've got to find a way oh i'd pay for that i i, I Heather. can we start taking up a collection right now <laughs> let's go i think it's a great idea let's do it when my <laughs> ski boots fly <laughs> is when i'll go down that track <laughs> uh, so uh so you could talk to each other you could hear each other if the, if conversation was appropriate it's just it's happening fast and think and it wouldn't there, there's no benefit to it is that I'm, tr I'm trying to get to the point yes well if kaylee is focusing on anything other than driving the track i mean basically it is driving faster than our speed limits here in canada we're going about 130 kilometers an hour in whistler it was 145 kilometers an hour yeah. and it's 
in a tunnel instead of in a big four lane highway. It's in a tunnel that's only a few meters wide, two really, like it's not very wide at all. And depending on the, where the corners are, she's only seeing a few meters ahead of her. So you don't have time, like, and that's how fast you're going. It's, it's in, it's crazy. If she's even, if something is distracting her in the back of her mind, if she's trying to hear what I'm saying or registering what I'm saying, then she's, we're definitely either going to eat it or, you know, hit the roof or, because she missed a steer and so yeah. we'll just hit the roof. Like something, something would go wrong. It's just going way too quickly. So my job is to shut up and be <laughs> still, really. Um, I've been thinking about... I mean, if she screams, we have hit the roof before, and every once in a while, like, she'll let out a squeal in the front. I can hear that. Like, I hear if she screams or hear if, if she lets... That'd you know, scare the hell out of me. Sound. Yeah, well, yeah, it wasn't the most comforting feeling in no. the back, but, you know, it's, like, you can hear stuff that goes on, but it's definitely not my... Good job, Kaylee. That was a great corner, you know, because yeah. she's already two corners ahead. So. Hey, ha- Sorry, Heather. Um... So, so tell me this. How do you get told you're car- carrying the flag in the closing ceremonies? That must be an interesting conversation. Yeah, uh, just a phone call. Um, at first, Kaylee, Kaylee, was given the, uh, Kaylee received the phone call first, um, and it was when we were, lo- we were just finishing a really late interview at the track, and then we had to load all of our sleds into the crates. Um, and I saw her overtaking the phone call, and she came up and, and said I was just, you know, at first it was, an individual phone call and she was, she said, I was just asked to carry the flag. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm so happy for you. That's so great. And then when I received the phone call um, and they had said, you're, you're carrying the flag. It was meant to be as a team. It was just one of those moments where it's like a, it's not that jump up and joy and scream. Like we did when we found out we won. It was more like a, Oh my gosh, really? And it was this internalized kind of, it was very, very humbling. It was very humbling to know that the nation selected us to represent them. And out of all of the Canadian athletes who represented our country so extremely well during these games, um, just the fact that, that we were chosen to represent them representing Canada was, it was a, it was kind of at those internal overwhelming quiet moments, I guess. Yeah. It was pretty neat. Um, I spent a couple of minutes here thinking about your offer. Um, and I'm not inclined to accept yet. I want to think about it. Some you don't more. have to drive, Bob. You just have to go for the ride. No, yeah. no, no, no. This is the whole point. Um, I might be game, Heather, if I can drive. <laughs> if you could drive. Yeah, you want to get in the back behind no. me. You have to take a driving school. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't even know driving school. I've got my license. I can then go. I you will are watch you game? You and I will cheer from the bottom. Yeah, you see now who's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't even think I'd recommend you getting in with me driving. So I don't think that I would get in with you driving. I, I would. No, I, I understand. You're saying. I promise you I would be there watching. Yeah, and I promise you it ain't going to happen. <laughs> uh, listen, um, con- what can we say? Congratulations. It was spectacular. Um, and, and I say, you know, you could count on one. Well. To win one is one thing. To win two is just extraordinary, and uh, we couldn't be happier for you. We were happy on the day it happened, and we're we're happy it took a few minutes for us. And we wish you could have come in in the studio uh, and shown off. Yeah, I know you made it. I know you tried. Made it because of traffic. No, I'm back in Toronto probably in a few weeks, so maybe we can have a little. Yeah, let's get together. Let's do that. Have a little reunion. Congratulations and thank you. Thanks so much, you guys. Talk to you again. Okay. Heather Moyes, two-time Olympic gold medalist.